We're back with House of the Dragon Season 2, Episode 5, full spoiler review. Let's dive into this. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as well, because we got a lot to talk about. I mean, this is kind of the in the aftermath of the king almost dying, which I thought he, they actually were going to go through with it. They didn't. He's charred, all fucked up, barely can move. And now, little eye patch boy, uh, Aemon, is in charge. He's the king, which uh, causes a lot of turmoil and drama. Like, will Allison and Sir Kristen Cole, like, continue to have their little fuck fest? Who knows? But um, this was a good aftermath episode. Primarily, again, moving the characters and structure then after the incredible and incredible episode where princess dies uh which sucks because i love that character but again to see where a lot of characters now are moving and where every single person is it's always fascinating to see that realignment after a major death in such as game of thrones or house of the dragons and that's what we're getting here so diving into this let's just focus it in in each of the characters and their storylines primarily looking at damon first because damon his storyline's been very slow this season. I, I, I'm i a little bit hit or miss with it, but this was kind of the episode that made me look at Damon a little bit deeper as a character, and that's something that was quite interesting, like how he's burning, base, like he's basically like, back in season one, if he threatened to burn the shit out of you with his dragon, he was probably going to do it, and he spared him. He spared him, like on that hill. He was like, we need him. Like, he's smart and witty, but... For me, Matt Smith, the way that he balances out this character and how everyone knows Damon's a hothead and will go out there, he is actually getting a little bit more depth. And while he's having this whole paranoia, nightmare, fest, field thing, it is nice to see how much his character is kind of growing in terms of an arc. And I'm really curious to see where they end up leaving this season with that character because I think it'll only make us like him a little bit more. So... Overall fascinating stuff. Again, each episode's getting a little bit better with that storyline. Jumping from Matt Smith, let's go over to Team Green and everything going on over there. So as I mentioned off the top, Aegon, King Aegon is just out of commission. He's burned up, fucked up, all that sorts of stuff. And everyone returns. They bring the dragon's cut off head, which was just so, so depressing. I, I did not like that. But we get into this and they have this turmoil where I was really fascinated at first where they were like, Queen Alicent will take over. And she's kind of like holding herself up, which was interesting because, again, that would have put us against Alicent versus Renera in a sense. But of course, going back to that conversation that her and Renera had earlier this season, it's too late. And the men were basically like, eh, no, because if we give in to you and let you be queen, I mean, in the nicest way possible, we would basically be foregoing what we're trying to go against Renera. And there is truth to that, but also it's fucked up. And she notices that. And even Sir Kristen Cole, her little lover, goes against her and does Aemon. And seeing Aemon, first off, the editing in this episode, I also want to say, very on point. I love that stuff specifically. Like when you see Aegon and how he's dealing with this over here or not Aegon, Aemon dealing with this and looking at the throne and then you see what Damon's doing. Very fascinating stuff all across the board and really had me on board for what they were trying to do within this season. But again, then the conversation between her and Sir Kristen Cole when he's taking on the rat catchers and making sure that all that was done, fascinating. I love these conversational pieces and I love when they move these characters a little bit more forward. And same thing goes for Aemon who is very much more relaxed back but getting what he wants. This is what he wanted. He wanted to be king this entire time. And it is something that really, again, took me by the gist of it. I was very into this and very excited to see what they were able to bring to life in this moment. So all across the board, Team Green's just scattered. They're fucked. All that stuff. Very curious to see where that goes. But Team Black's trying to reorganize well. They had a big miss to them. They lost a dragon. And they lost a team member who the sea snake lost his wife. And to see the traumaticness that it's going through his eyes and what he deals in the conversation between him and his granddaughter, I thought was just excellent. It's how Renera wants him to be her second in command. And it overall makes sense. And I'm happy that I had conversations with some friends who thought maybe that he would be pissed at her for everything that had happened. But in reality, he's just mourning. 
Like he understands what had happened. And for all of that sort of element to work, it flourishes and makes this character so much stronger in terms of its development. And the sea snake again has been kind of fucking around, not really doing much, kind of coming in and out here, but it it works. And I'm hoping that he makes that choice again. I'm not huge on the books during this entire time frame or the lore, so I'm not sure if they'll follow the same structure as of the books or if they'll go a different route. But I love that. And again, that conversation when he proposes that his granddaughter takes the air and she goes, "No, like that's not that's not for me to decide and for me to take on." Which then moves us along to, I think, for me, my favorite conversations of this entire episode all happen between this granddaughter, Renera, and, of course, her son, who I think the final sequence, like when the, she was telling her son about the story about fire and ice and the prophecy, I like how this partnership and in terms of just a relationship is now growing here. And that final conversation where he says, why don't we look at others for dragon riders? And now getting that idea that they can particularly do that because they can find other people who were Tigerarians at one point in time. And I'm very interested to see where that takes and who they find along the route to bring in to this mysterious battle and in general to become dragon riders. At least that's the way that I'm taking it. Again, some of the terminology in House of Dragons can go a little bit over your head, but overall thought this was a solid episode. Not as great as last week, but still a great aftermath one. And I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section. So leave your thoughts down there. Hit that like and subscribe button. And of course, until next time, stay classy.